Be faithful, you're going to march around the walls one time for six days. And on the last day, you're going to march around and then you're going to blow the trumpets. The priests are going to blow the trumpets and the walls are going to come tumbling down. This process or this, these cities, if we, if we know a little bit about the Bible, we can look at them and say, use this as an example of, of, of what being a disciple is all about, discipleship. Discipleship and this growing into uh, one who is now uh, uh, capable and knowledgeable enough and has a relationship enough with God to where you can pick up your own mantle and wear your own mantle, which is where we're going here. In uh, verse number 8 of 2 Kings chapter 2, it says, Elijah took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters and they were divided here and there so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. So Elijah and Elisha crossed over on dry ground after he took his mantle and he struck, he folded it and he, and he struck the waters. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Ooh, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. In other words, Elijah, I trust you. I have seen who you are. I have seen who your God is. I have seen how God, the power of God, and, and how he has manifested himself in your life. I want a double portion of that. That's what I want. Now, we understand what double portions are. Double portions are Sometimes double trouble. <laughs> uh, you remember double mint gum? How about a double double? You know that one. Don't act like you don't know what a double double is. Come on, that's one of my favorite burgers. Come on now, a double double? Double meat, double cheese? In other words, one, one serving of portion is not enough. I want a double portion. Uh, two scoops of ice cream. That's what I want. A double portion of what you had. Now, you know this. This speaks volumes to to what he what he felt about Elijah's legacy. Is I, I see I see your legacy. I've watched you. I've, I've, I've walked with you. I understand that God is with you. I want a double portion. Now, isn't isn't this typical? You know when. When, when we ask for things, because we typically don't ask God for a double portion of spirituality of himself. We don't do that. Anybody do that? I see all your hands out there. Okay, you're very good. We don't usually do that. We ask God for a double portion of things. Worldly things. I need this, I need that, I want, I want, I want, I want. That's what we normally typically do, myself included. I'm in mean, we, you, me, we, we. That's what we do. But a double portion of, of, of himself, of God, we don't usually approach God like that. What that typically means is that if you ask for a double portion of something, then there's a whole lot more responsibility that goes along with that portion. Oh, I'm going to give it to you, but can you handle it? Can you handle a double portion of me? Is your commitment such that, does it, that, that it warrants you receiving a double portion. Let's see what God has, has to say about it. Um, uh, he said in verse number 10, you have asked a hard thing, Elijah is telling Elisha. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. As they were going along and talking, behold, they, they approached a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Then he took hold of his clothes and tore them in two pieces. Tore them. So in other words... Elijah says, this thing you ask is a hard thing, but if you see what's going to happen, you're worthy. 
your, your, your understanding and your, your, your perspective is such that, that you see things not from a worldly perspective, but from a godly and from a spiritual perspective. Um, if, if you can see this, then it will be granted to you. So he took up the mantle that fell from Elisha and he struck the waters. Mm. So Elisha took the mantle that fell from Elisha. He struck the waters just like Elijah did. And he says, Where is the Lord, the God of Elisha? And when he was, when, when he also had struck the waters, they were divided here and there, and Elisha crossed over. So he's asked the question, Are you with me, God? You, I've seen you with Elijah, but I want to know, are you with me? And not only uh, are you with me, but am I experiencing uh, the same thing that Elijah experienced? You see, this thing called fellowship and discipleship is, is, is so significant in the walk of, of Christians, in the walk of Christians. Christian life. Um, it's, it's something that we should not overlook. It's something that we should esteem to, to, to make a, a top priority, fellowship. Because it's with fellowshipping that we draw closer to each other. And if we are closer to each other, and if one especially is close to God, then the one maybe who's not as close you'll get closer to God. You know that saying that if it, you know, be careful who you hang out with? You know that saying? Yeah. Be careful if you hang out with uh, a man of God. Because if you don't want to become like that man of God, don't hang out with him. Because a man of God will teach you some things about God. Let that be said amongst each one of us. Let us, let us in, be actively engaged in fellowshipping. And fellowshipping, you know, from the standpoint of we are Christians, we have these things in common. We love each other. We love God because He loved us. Uh, we have a, a love for His Word. We love to talk about His Word. Imagine if we spent as much time talking about God as we do some of the things that we do. A fourth of the time as we do some of the things that we do. How life-changing that would be. To be able to say, I want a double portion. Hmm, a double portion. Uh, I don't know that I can handle a double portion. I wouldn't even know what that's like. So the challenge is this, for us to remember who we are, to remember that God has called us. We are not just people that come in and sit in the pews. We are not just anybody. God has called you. God wants to, he's, he's screaming at the top of his voice, I'm here for you. I wanna, I wanna do this for you, I wanna do that for you, I'm, I'm here for you. He's calling. Can you hear him calling in your life? I, I want to I take you places you've never been before. I want to I show you some things that, that you've never seen before. I want to help you to relate to people that you've never related before. I want you to, to be a blessing you know, to, to other people. I want to show you some blessings. He wants to do all of those things. But it's not going to happen if we consider worldly things to be more important than we do godly things or spiritual things. The message is for you today. The call is for us to draw closer to God. And in drawing closer to God, we'll draw closer to each other. We ought to be like uh, uh, Jeremiah in, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, where uh, he, he said uh, uh, that uh, he, he just couldn't keep it in. You know, Jeremiah was was that weeping prophet. You know, Jeremiah uh, was, was sent by God and, and he felt like 
he felt like God uh, set him up. He, 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 he set him up because he says, uh, Oh Lord, you have deceived me and I was deceived. You have overcome me and prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For each time I speak, I cry loud. I proclaim violence and destruction, God's judgment. Because for me, the word of the Lord has resulted in reproach and derision all day long. All day long. But if I say, I will not remember him or speak any more in his name, then in my heart it becomes like a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in. That's who we ought to be, like Jeremiah. The word, let, let this, this thing, you know, this, this proclamation, proclaiming God's word, this, this, this thing called fellowship, discipleship, let it not be shut up in our bones. Let it burn like a fire. Amen. And, and uh, you know, to the point to where it said that he was weary of holding it in and he couldn't endure it anymore. What a, what a, what a way to live your life when you're called to do something and for whatever reason you can't or you don't want to or, but it just, you just have to, you're compelled to. It just won't stay in. You just got to do it. Just got to say it. That's what you were called to do. So let us be like that. Let us be uh, on fire for each other. On fire for drawing close to God. You know, having a prayer partner. Having a, a, a you know, I was able to spend Bible study on Wednesday with, uh, with one of our members. I'd never done that. A little one-on-one -on -one time. Bible study on Wednesday night. That was great. That part was great. Yeah. Uh, so we have an opportunity to prostrate ourselves, to take inventory of who we are with God, and to make changes. Request, petition God for help if needed. A petition each other for, um, for those things that will make us better Christians. We're going to stand and sing a song of invitation. And uh, if there's anyone that wants a prayer, specific prayer, um, then we're just going to ask you to re remain standing. Uh, and I will pray. And if someone has a closing prayer, I'm sure. Closing prayer? Not sure what it is, but uh, if not, we'll take care of it. Let us stand and sing our song of invitation. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over toward departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He
maybe we weren't accustomed to, uh, the audio and all that. We'll, we'll get there, we're fine. Um, stay blessed, my, my, my brothers and sisters. I really, uh, my concern is, is that during this time, with everything that's going on, we get discouraged. And I know it, I get it, I get discouraged. But do not be discouraged from, uh, from your relationship with, with each other and your relationship with Go to God when you're discouraged, and uh, and He will He will lift you up. Uh, it's the song uh, "How to Reach the Masses, Men from Every Bird." For an answer, Jesus gave the key. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift Him up, folks. Let's lift Him up, uh, and um, and allow the peace of God to guard our hearts. As the Scripture says, "Thank you for your." You bow with me as we have our closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for Mark and the uh, word that he brought to us and we hope that we will make application in our life. And we also pray that you'll watch over us and keep us safe and take care of the ones that aren't here and bless us until we uh, meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.